Hey guys, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program and the eternal wait for sunrise. But there we go, sunrise happened, even on Minmus it, you know, it does happen. Um, and now at this point I've noticed that my, my legs aren't working properly on my little rover here. Uh, you will remember last episode we left Alexandra's Pride up at the, in, in high orbit with two days um, until his landing burn. Well, that, that was an inclination burn. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the biome bouncer out for its first official spin. We're going to go collect some science and uh, do all that good stuff that means our space program can advance forwards. Now Jeb has not flown this before, um, as may be demonstrated by his slight lack of control in that takeoff there. But if anyone is up for the job of flying a test uh, test vehicle like for the first time, it is him. I mean, after all, he did manage to get himself down from orbit without any rockets, just using this ship. But then I was already on a nice flat trajectory. Uh, everything just seemed to be working in my favour there. Uh, this time I'm taking off from an inclined plane, um, which means that if I just boost straight upwards, I'm going to like spin out ever so slightly because I'm tilted to the to the horizon but it's all right we'll, we'll figure out how all this works um and indeed just with the uh, the little bit of application of the sas there uh we we get off for a nice smooth takeoff it's so confident in fact that we're going to retract the landing gear and just continue cruising on up here now the purpose of this mission is obviously to go around and do um, science in as many biomes as possible. Um, though I do come to a realisation slightly later into this flight that this is not going to be quite as efficient as I thought it was. Um, now this vessel is set up for a two science collection trip thing. Um, yeah, he, he's got basically two sets of entire of the entire science: the goo, the materials bay, and the uh, temperature scanning thermometer um, to 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 check. Now, I did this quick check to see what biome I was in and how much the uh, science was worth, and then I noticed that I am currently classified as in near space. Um, and when I land on the, I'm going to be classified as landed. So that means that this um, dual science package is actually only good for one biome. Um, the, the landed and the taking off bio, uh, um, situations in that biome. So I immediately break and I'm like, well, this isn't as good as I thought it was. But we'll, what we'll do is we'll make sure um, that we've got all the Highland science. As I'm here, um, it, like, I'm not earning oodles of science from this. But I also want to keep that the, the, the biome pairing sit the biome situation pairings, the landed and taking it off, together. So if I do anything other than Highlands here, I'm gonna be breaking up the situations, and that's not what I want to do. So I max out everything I can do and head back to the mining um, base because I've spent some fuel. Uh, it's taken me I, I don't see any of my gauges anywhere, so I can't tell you. It's taken me that much fuel <laughs> to find out this this uh, horrific... It's, it's not really a failure. It's a learning experience. So we, we've definitely profited from this situation. And we're going to get a lot of science anyway. There, there, there are hundreds of science already um, stacked up in this vessel. So we just need to uh, ease her on back. Set her up with the refueling line from the uh, the Keythane fuel station, and wait for the uh, science return shuttle to make its um, landing close by. Shuttle all the science across, send that home. Job done. We can move on to another biome and put this nasty, nasty experience behind us, or this nasty, nasty learning experience behind us. And of course, it's not nasty. It's good, right? Honestly, yeah. 300 meters and closing and Jeb is having a whale of a time as he brings us in on a ever so modified arc to get us closer to the Keithane mining platform just over yonder. Now of course with the leaving all I had to do was push up and push away. With the coming back all I had to do was push up and push away. But now we have some precision flying to undertake. With the small chance of being able to slam my vessel into my mining platform and destroying everything that I have done throughout this entire series. Which, you know, would be funny and make good YouTube video, but it would make me sad. And let's, let's be honest, this is not about making me sad, this is about making me happy, right? It's about making you happy, really, but I'm, I've got a small suspicion that if I make myself happy, I'm going to make you happy as well. 
Uh, I, I generally find that's the way the world works. Anyway, we're shutting ourselves down and we are very, very close. In fact, we're so close, I'm going to say that's probably about close enough. So it's time to get Jebediah out of his vessel and go hook up the, um, the fuel line that the Kerbal Attachment System gives us, which I think is one of the better mods out there. I've got to say, it really gives you a, a sense of purpose to having your, your Kerbals get out of your vehicle and, and run around and do stuff. It's nothing quite like being able to attach a whole base together with these little bits and get your Kerbals out there and run around and do it all. I think it's great. Um, almost as great as doing backflips on Minmus, but I can't do them on demand like I can do with the, uh, with the Kerbal stuff. I can only do that on accident. On accident? Well, what am I, American? Woof. With that uh, slight linguistical faux pas behind us, we're going to jump ourselves out to the Alexander's Pride and bring ourselves down to this first manoeuvre nude that puts us into a, a, an equatorial orbit. Now, the problem with this orbit is that um, my landing site is there on Mimus. I'm sure you can see it. It's the one with the ship and the flag. And I am going away from that, which means that we've got an entire orbit to try and kill. Um, it also means that on the way round, I get to do lots of like uh, orbital trim manoeuvres and stuff like that to make sure that I'm as low down as possible um, and also as um, central as possible towards the landing site now obviously this doesn't go exactly as to plan but what we're gonna do is jump ahead to this point right here where what I'm doing is pushing my orbit pushing my orbit sorry just below the surface of Minmus so we can get rid of this launch stage and not have to worry about it like cluttering up my orbit or anything because there is nothing worse than to finding a, a piece of debris orbiting at 20 kilometers around Minmus and going, oh no, I didn't realize that was there and have it slam into the side of your vessel and then there's bits everywhere and yeah, it, it's not great. Anyway, so we, we look, launched that towards the planet's surface and we've got a bit of a little bit of fancy maneuvering to get this vessel on a, 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 a non-fatal orbit. Um, so we're going to make sure that all, all parts are working because... Well, it's just nice to, to be sure that everything's working when you come down for an approach rather than finding out like two foot off the floor because that, that's not the best point. Indeed, as demonstrated, I would rather find out up at Apoapsis and then we can set a launch, uh, a rescue mission into progress or whatever. But anyway, here comes the sun, which means that I've got um, pitch and altitude control, not altitude, pick pitch and attitude control and we can hopefully try and eyeball our landing spot no we can't it's all the way over the horizon but we will break our orbit down to make it like a little bit more manageable like the closer we can get to the floor when we're making our landing by far the better it, it is um it's just it's right there as opposed to like you know i'm coming down from over here and then trying to get right there um or at least that's how i found it maybe you didn't quite understand what i meant by right there but hopefully you will see when we're coming around through this now i know from experience that the landing site is up a hill just past these great flats which means we're nearly there um that we, we can probably do it all from the seat of our pants um i really need to uh try and shift my inclination up like i'm doing right there uh i still don't have an intuitive grasp of in inclination i am starting to get there you know if you burn up you're you, you're gonna move your your orbit up to north and that is great on a suborbital trajectory what like what we're doing here but it, it still confuses me ever so slightly up in orbit. It, it shouldn't be too difficult to extrapolate one from the other, but it turns out it is. So yeah, there we go. That's how that's how that one's going. Anyway, because the top of the arc is boring, we're going to skip from there to here. Um, and this is like the landing sequence. Uh, I, I've I've literally just gone all the way over the top of the arc, and now I'm like close enough to go. Oh, I should start like working out where my orbit's going to go because. Yeah, I want to land on a spot that's less than two kilometers away, which means both these things are loaded, which is, which is good. Um, so I've, I've reduced my speed to 10 meters per second, and now we're literally going to just try and fly our way over towards the target because, well, because that's what we need to do to be able to join them up together. In, indeed, to be able to transfer science across from one to the other. I, mean, I know I'm going to be using a Kerbal to actually do so, and with the Kerbal's RCS pack, we can actually travel quite some distance, especially on Minmus, because they're so small and their jetpacks are so powerful. But that's besides the point. I want these vessels to be close together. Anyway, we find ourselves floating... Um, less than a kilometre away from our intended target so it's time to get serious and figure out exactly how we're going to get ourselves down as close as possible. Now I'm in the, per the process of approach that involves kind of skipping along at the top of my arc where I I'm trying to maintain forward velocity whilst not plummeting to the ground too fast because as we all know plummeting to the ground too fast 
is not what a good landing is all about. It is a landing, but it's not a good landing. Now, we're going to cycle through um, our different uh, velocity markers because we want to know how fast we're traveling relative to the floor. Um, because as we all know, the floor is spinning round the orbit at the, whatever the rotation rate of the planet is. Um, and if we're just working off our orbital one, we'll like zero orbital speed and then the ground will come up and hit us really fast because, you know, the planet's spinning. But hopefully if Jebediah's plan uh, flying skills are up to normal scratch, we should be able to avoid that grisly, horrible, nasty death and put down nicely within a couple of metres of the mining vessel. Because whilst I had did previously state that Kerbals can travel great long distances on their RCS packs, I don't want to do that. I, ju I just want to get out and make a short hop and then start shuttling stuff around. Anyway, the finesse point of this, uh, this landing is coming up, so it's time to put down figure out exactly what we're going to do to to move over there um i i do believe that my my idea is to uh orientate myself with rcs and then just give gentle downward thrusts or at least downwards in orientation to my spaceship not orientation of the planet so that is towards the vessel um and hopefully just make li little little rcs hops just I was going to say just like that, but then I went and got my landing gear stuck in the floor and, and that, that wasn't exactly great. So we're going to uh, use a bit more of our rocket fuel, push ourselves up a little bit higher and then take RCS control so that we can uh, well, be, be a bit more gung-ho about it and be a bit, bit faster. Um, whilst I, I really don't want to um, crash these vehicles into each other, I do want to try and connect them all up, as I have said many 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 times now in this particular ramble the time has come to get jeb out of his vessel and uh grab this um fuel hose and see if we're anywhere near close enough uh at flying out i find that no i'm not it's got well it's gone red and i assume that means i'm not close enough and also i have noticed that the other fuel line needs disconnecting but first we're gonna get this ship in close because that's what we're doing at the moment so let's let's finish this one job first and then we'll get on with the other one afterwards so we're gonna need to uh, hop up in the air a little bit and um, hover there and get the RCS flowing because you know who you controls the RCS controls the universe and with these final few expulsions of our RCS fuel we finally bring the Alexandra's pride into its final resting sp well no it's not its final resting point it's definitely the final resting point of these outside fuel tanks but these middle one this middle section this is a good one and it's coming with us right so all that remains is to uh, get Jeb out try and figure out how what the hosing situation is going to be like here because there's there's too many hoses not, not enough sockets and we'll try and figure out how we're going to get the uh, the science flowing from one vessel to another and whilst we watch Jeb do all the stuff that I just told you about all that is left for me to say is bye bye thank you for joining me for this adventure next time we will be launching the Alexander's Pride back to Kerbal and hopefully sending up the science materials bay so that we can clean out the biome bouncer and make it all functional again Bye! Look at him derping about like that.